the small mountain that's on the side of my face. I'm well aware, and unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. Um, but I just, I don't know, felt the need to mention that. So yeah, anyways, I just really like these cards. And um, the, the second part of this video, I'm going to be doing a lot of shuffling and card sounds and things like that. So don't worry if you like the sort of Find in another in another tarot deck. It 
it's just there's additional information that we're getting out of this one because it's focused on plants. So I think they're really cool. And I'm pretty sure there's this old sort of tradition about your most meaningful decks are, are ones that are gifted to you. I'm pretty sure they also say that your first deck should be one that's gifted to you, but I don't know. I think that's just kind of like folklore. I, I've, <laughs> I usually just buy my own decks, um, but it is definitely nice to receive them because, um, you know, they add up. So this is just a quick look at the style. We'll be using this deck as well as the other deck for our reading, so don't worry, you'll get to see them again. But I, I really like the black and white contrast. I think it looks nice. So, anyways, that is the Dara Botanical Darrow deck. Put that back in the box later. Okay, now the next deck is fun. It's also a tarot deck. It's my last tarot deck. Um, this is another one that I got for Christmas from my roommate slash best friend slash slash whatever. Soul sister, I don't know. Um, and it's the Golden Girls tarot deck. And um, for as long as I can remember, I've been obsessed with the Golden Girls. It was always my favorite show. Because I would watch it with my grandma growing up. Because she loved it. So, big Golden Girls fan. And so, this is just sort of a fun deck, right? It's, it's all Golden Girls themed. I do use this deck, but it, it's definitely more of a fun deck, you know? Um, there's just a certain kind of energy, you know what I mean? And they're very fun, bright colors. Just like a blast, right? I just, I love them. Um, they kind of feel like a novelty item, you know? I'm, like, afraid to use them too much because I don't want them to get, like, bent or broken or anything, but Blanche is the devil card. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I really like the colors here. They're just really pretty. Sorry for the glare. I was trying to do this earlier when I had some sunlight left, but it was just way too loud, and it might it might still be a little loud, but it was way worse before. Here's Rose. So again, you know, same type of cards, but different imagery, different meanings. I don't know, they're just really fun. box um, decks 
where you get, I think, like, $10 or $15 off if you, like, get one that's been damaged. And I was like, uh, yeah, of course, I don't care if it's damaged. And it's literally perfect. Like, I, I can't find any, any damage to it. Um, so I guess they take, like, really, like, you know, top care with their items because I would never in a million years consider it damaged, but I did get money off. So I was really happy about that. I got the deck I wanted and it was cheaper. Oh, this is nice. Okay. So again, oracle cards, they are different. They can be used as affirmations. Um, in my experience, there's usually less information on the card itself. Like, I could talk, you know, forever about the Ten of Cups, but, um, sometimes these kinds of oracle cards just have, like, one word attached to them, and you kind of, um, infer beyond that. Here's the little guidebook it comes with. These cards are stunning. Like, I cannot wait to show them to you. Again, I've used these, uh, these cards in the past, so you may have seen them in other videos, but I just always want to show them off. They are just, they're stunning. Here's the little guidebook that tells you about what every card means. So I'll be referencing this, um, most likely in the video. I'm going to try to use as many decks as I can for the general reading. We'll talk more about, um, what I'm doing as I do it in the next part of this video, but um, I do like to incorporate as many different decks as I can in different ways, so look at the way the light shimmers, shimmer, 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 shimmers. Okay. And now here are the actual cards. Like, I, ju I just can't, I love them. And they have this, like, gold edging, which I find to be stunning as well. And here are the colors of the cards. I'll show you a few of them. So, they all have a similar kind of color theme, I would say, but different imagery. This is dressed, um, and they all shimmer with this, like, nice gold outline here. This is Patience. Patience, patience. And you know, this camera is probably not going to do these cards justice. But um, you can kind of get a, a sense of what they're bringing to the table here. They're really cool. This one's manifest, manifest, manifest. We got love. We have love, 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 love. And then we got self love. I really love this deck. I purchased it, I don't know, a few months ago at least, but I'm just so impressed. So impressed. So impressed. So that is the Threads of Fate Oracle deck. There's a whole bunch of different Oracle decks that they do. They do tarot decks as well. Um, it's definitely worth the price. I know I mentioned that they're expensive, but that's, that's for good reason. I don't want to make it sound like, um, it's not worth it or it's too high. It's just, again, I'm cheap. That's all it is. The quality, like these are very thick cards. <laughs> these are very thick cards. They're not just gonna break on you and you can just tell they're, they're very high quality. So again, I'm not trying to rip on the price at all. I'm just, they're higher quality than a lot of other decks you might find just based on what they're printed on in the art and all of that. Okay, and that brings us to our last oracle deck, which is also our last deck, period. This one I bought um, last month. I stumbled upon it, and I just had to get it. I don't know. I thought it was really cool. Get ready for another nice box. Okay. <laughs> this is the Literary Witch's Oracle. A 70 card deck and guide. 
suppose, but I do really, really like it. And the presentation is just lovely. <laughs> it's really a lovely box. And then we have our guidebook. And another thing about Oracle cards, which you probably may have already assumed, but tarot decks generally have, I think it's 78 cards. Oracle decks can have any number of cards, so this one has 70. The one I just showed off has, I think, uh, 50 or 55. So it can totally range in how many different kinds of cards you have. It's the guidebook. And then here are the actual Oracle cards. Here's what they I'm sorry. Here's what they look like on one side. And then here is the art on the other side. So again, it sort of has that gothic look. I am I'm realizing that's something I'm sort of drawn to for whatever reason. I don't know why. But this basically features different literary um, women throughout history. And it also features different symbols throughout. So it's a mixture of individuals and symbols. And the guidebook tells all about the, um, the women, what they did, what they're known for. And same with the symbols. The symbols give an idea of why they're symbols and why they matter. Um, but it's, it's sort of a basic artistic style, but I really do enjoy them. And I got these just like right at Barnes & Noble. They actually have a huge tarot and oracle section, which surprised me. See, I'm trying to put them back in the box and it's making noise. Which is why I didn't do that with the others. But I just kind of went rogue in this moment. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the literary witch's oracle. to look into the 
see what's going on there and then I will pull a card to see is there an area that you should acknowledge or maybe avoid be aware of some kind of energy that you should maybe think about a little bit and think of this as maybe the shadow energy and then I'm gonna pull an advice card so what should you what should you do with this information and again this is a very generalized reading so it's not going to apply to everybody and that's okay um, take whatever you can get from it if it doesn't feel like it resonates with you that's okay hopefully at the very least it's relaxing there will be different card sounds and things like that now I also just want to say that while I have been practicing this a lot I am by no means an expert right so I do have this handy tarot book that sometimes I refer to if I need um, a little more information about a card because there's a lot of cards to learn and while I feel like I've been pretty good lately sometimes it doesn't hurt to double check right so I might pull this guy out and uh, do a little additional reading but that should also be very dingly uh, have some good triggers there but all in all doing this for a little bit of time now so hopefully um, I'm improving I think that I am and I guess the last message I have is is if this type of video doesn't really interest you too much but you're still watching just try to take it <coughs> sorry just try to take it at face value just get what you can out of it Maybe you don't necessarily believe in anything that happens here, but maybe you find it relaxing or calming or you find a card that might interest you. So that's all I have to say. Let's get started with the reading. <laughs> okay, so again, we are going to start with the Deviant Moon Tarot, which is this lovely little deck here. start by just simply mixing all of these cards up. This looks kind of crazy, but I'm not good at shuffling these because they are so long. <laughs> so I do it this way so I don't damage the cards. shuffles 
sense. Sort of, you could think of it like charitable giving, right? There's some kind of giving nature that you've been experiencing. Um, and we're going to clarify this to get more information. But just face value, this card is somebody who is very giving by nature, is giving to others, um, and sort of has this abundance, right? Now, pentacles generally represent wealth, um, and, it, and it could be financial wealth, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're giving financially. It could mean you have an abundance of, I don't know, emotional stability. You could be providing, you know, um, like a thoughtful ear to somebody else. You could be helping on an emotional level. It could be really any kind of giving. Okay, so we will clarify that in a bit, but first let's just continue with, um, let's just continue with the reading. And now we will look at your uh, present, what's going on in your present. Now, just to back up for a moment, you probably noticed that card like just flew out. When that happens, I like to accept it <laughs> because I feel like that's just the energy that happens. If that doesn't happen, I will just shuffle and pull it out myself, but this card just really felt like it wanted to come out, didn't it? So that's what happened there. All right, so now we're going to pull out a message for your present. What's going on in the present for some of you?
this one, so that's what we're gonna do. So looking back here at the recent past, we have the Six of Pentacles, which again relates to giving. Your, there's something that you, you've been giving in the past, but let's clarify and see exactly what that is. So for my viewers, some of my viewers who this applies to, what exactly are we giving? What is this giving energy here? Let's clarify. Tell me more about this giving energy. This Six of Pentacles here. What more do we need to know? Okay. We just pulled a lovely little cup card. We have the Eight of Cups. represent emotion, strong connection, strong feelings, and uh, the Eight of Cups can sometimes represent sort of walking away from a situation feeling like, uh, you know, um, maybe we're, we're past this a little bit, you're kind of over it. That's sort of the sense of the card, but let's keep going, let's clarify some more, see what else we can find. What else do we need to know about these energies here? These pentacles and these cups in the recent past. What are we moving away from? Who's moving away? You know, what is... What's the vibe? <laughs> Just pull one more and see what happens. Again, sorry for the kind of crazy shuffling here. I have like no elbows. <laughs>
50% financial stability, but it's not always financial. I want to keep reiterating that. It can be emotional too, but it's more of a focus on um, stability, longevity, um, comfort, feeling comfortable in a situation. So by itself, that doesn't necessarily mean romance, but um, the Six of Cups card, sorry, I forgot to show you. Here's the pentacles, this Nine of Pentacles card. Um, and again, when you think of wish fulfillment, that could mean this is a connection that's important to you, something you want. Um, and then we have the Six of Cups right here. I'm like, can you see that? <laughs> the camera's far away. Um, the Six of Cups, this is, um, this is a really cool card. It's one of my favorites. And it talks about a, it talks about, it symbolizes a very strong, um, deep past connection. So this could be somebody that's been in your life for a long time, or if they haven't been, it's somebody that you just feel that instant connection to, like you've known them forever. Um, and they bring out this sort of sense of childhood wonder and, it's like when you are with this person, you're kind of like kids again, right? Um, it has a really good energy. It brings you back to your roots, back to your sort of inner self. And um, again, it's just, it's a really strong, deep, long-term connection. And again, we have this nine of pentacles here. Again, represent, representing um, stability, comfort, longevity, wish fulfillment. So this is a connection that's important to you and it's coming across as important to them as well I don't see any negative energy uh, with these clarification cards here so for some of you you might be experiencing a really good connection right now um, whether it's long term um, as in it's been happening for a while or it's new but it feels like you've known this person forever uh, I guess hold on to that that's a really good present energy to have, so shout out to you guys if that's what you're working with at this moment. Okay, and next for the, um, the near future, again, we have this Ten of Swords energy, which again, it looks scary, but it could be signaling that you're coming to a time where you're feeling trapped, feeling enclosed, feeling stagnant, and feeling some kind of hardship, pain, suffering from that. And again, like, I don't want you to take it as something that could be totally terrible. Because even just thinking about this pandemic right now, like, a lot of us are feeling trapped, right? Maybe some of you will come to your breaking point and say, you know what, I need to make some changes. I need to do something different. But let's clarify and see. So for my viewers, what is this Ten of Swords energy? What do we need to know? What can we clarify? this card here. Whoa, <laughs> just jumped right out. Okay, so we just pulled the Seven of Cups here. Let's keep going. What else? Let's pull one more card. Seven of Cups. Okay, Four of Pentacles. And I, this one almost flipped over and I'm going to take it. I know I only took two for the others, but hey, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Okay, getting back. <laughs> so we pulled the uh, Seven of Cups here. Uh, can you see it? Can you see it? I don't know. We pulled the Four of Pentacles here. And then we pulled the Eight of Wands here. So, starting with this cup card, this seven of cups, this represents somebody who's trying to sort of get in tune with their more creative side, focusing on maybe a side project, a passion project. There's something that you care about that maybe you can investigate or need to investigate. I'm going to just talk about the cards and their meanings first before I tie it back to this ton of swords energy, just so you have sort of a baseline understanding. Then we have our Four of Pentacles. This is somebody who um, is maybe focusing on financials, right? So you might be grasping onto your uh, financial wealth a little stronger. Maybe you feel like you need to, or um, maybe you're grasping on a little too tightly without realizing. 
utilizing it and that could be causing some discomfort which again I think is a natural response to what's going on in the world a lot of us are thinking more about money right now too and then we have this eight of wands card which represents there's challenge there's struggle happening but we have the strength to push forward there's this sort of image of a, a this individual who's holding this massive hatchet and they're just cutting it down we're cutting through the crap <laughs> you can think of it that way like yes there's struggle but we have the resources and tools to get through it so we're gonna cut it down so how i can relate that all back to this ten of wands card sorry this ten of swords card is that tying it all together maybe some of you um might feel like there is this sort of financial tension either you need to start focusing more on finance or maybe you feel like you're focusing too much on it and that could relate to you working on this passion project whatever that is maybe you feel like you feel stuck because you haven't been able to work on it too much because you've been focused too much on making the money and just cashing in your checks or maybe you feel like you can't because money's tough, money's tight, and you need to, to focus more on that. But this, um, this Eight of Wands energy is signaling that there is challenge, so we're confirming this, this Ten of Swords that we saw earlier. There is challenge, but this card is also signaling that whatever you're doing, however you're planning to get through it, you do have the strength, the resources to make it happen you're going to get through, you're going to see that light at the end of the tunnel. Even if it might not feel like it, it's going to happen. So again, just tying it all together here, there is going to feel like some stagnation, some, this feeling of being stuck, and it might relate to your, um, your finances, how you're dealing with your finances, and how you're dealing with that more creative side of you, the things you care about that maybe you're not paying enough attention to and need to or have been put on the back burner, okay? So that's the sort of general energy I'm getting from that. So I hope that's helpful for some of you. It might resonate, it might not, but that's what I'm pulling in general. And now we'll just pull two more tarot cards, one for um, sort of something to be mindful of and aware of, and then we're going to pull an advice card, sort of what should you do. So what we'll start with what should you be aware of or acknowledge what is the energy there what should my viewers acknowledge and be aware of just in general okay ace of cups
this sort of cyclical energy. So that means that um, you might be ending a cycle and moving on to a new one. So the advice here is to embrace that, embrace that new energy. If it feels like you are being pulled away from something, maybe it's time. Maybe that means that it's just your time has come in that way and you're moving on to something new and different. So again, we have this Ace of Cups energy that represents new beginnings. So really just go with the flow and accept those kinds of changes that might be coming. Let's clarify with one more card just to see if there's any more information there. It feels like this is kind of all coming together, but we'll see. Is there any other information about this world card energy that some of our viewers need to know? bits of information relating to this world card. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that just really whipped out at me. A few cards fell, but I saw this one and this one felt like the one. So this is the Knight of Cups. Again, we have more cup energy, lots of cup energy, emotions, strong connections. Um, and knights represent messengers or communicators. So this means that either you will be focusing on communicating your feelings or somebody else will. Um, and as it relates to this changing cycle, just go with it. Go with this energy if you feel like you need to share how you're feeling with somebody or even with yourself. Embrace that. Let that be your energy. Um, there's lots of strong Again, like I said, cups, energies, which strong emotions, communications, all of those things. So go with it. Okay, so that's that's what I have for tarot. And we're going to just end with an oracle card from the Threads of Fate de uh, oracle deck. And again, I'm sorry, I didn't use my other tarot deck. I just felt like I really like this one and this is the one I wanted to use. But another time we'll use that one, I promise. So let's just get one final overall message. Wow. I'm not going to take that. I'm not ready. One final overall message uh, for this reading with this Oracle deck. Sorry if you hear any noise. I think my roommate is cooking? Question mark. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so nature. We got the nature card. just because 
because this is a very generalized reading. So, nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Maybe you just enjoyed hearing the sounds of these cards. 